Hello everyone, and welcome to this unboxing video for Arkham Horror The Card Games Return to The Path to Carcosa! So, this is the third Return to box, and it is to the second expansion of, well, Arkham Horror The Card Game, the living card game of Arkham Horror. And again, as per usual, this is more an organization box, but it still has new content to it. It's meant to be an updated version of both cards that came in the main box of the expansion, and to all of the scenarios, including the Mythos packs that make up the rest. So, let's get to this. Oh, and a reminder, these have a nice little organization library, like old school library card slot, or card drawer style uh, organization to them, so it's really nice. The other side's not too bad either. Just more artistic as opposed to, hey, that's clearly that. Even though it also does say. So if it's like any of the others, half this box is going to be empty. So first off, we've got the alteration rules on the top. Oh, it's more than half the box. And this time, it's more than just a single two-sided two -sided sheet of paper. It actually opens up and explains everything that you need to know and also has, how do they word these again? Achievement lists and optional variants ultimatums. These were also available in the other return shoots, but are likely entirely different things. The achievements definitely are, or I would hope so. And that nicely folds, and I will say that because it was not folded that way inside the box. So. This whole box, other than that set of rules, contains just this. So again, you really are buying this for a very clear organization, and it is really expensive for that price, but it is still also new mechanics. This is probably worth close to the price of this whole thing, but eh, I'm not complaining. I'm just stating so that people know what they're getting. So, first off, we've got a set of Deck dividers. This is intended for all the various uh, scenario decks and everything, including the ones from the core game. I don't know if I've mentioned that in the previous video, because I'm not opening these in this video. It's literally just dividers. This is how they look. They've got a pale version. <laughs> pale. Um, palette is what I'm thinking of. Of the set icon, as well as one up in the corner. Uh, that's a lot more clear and this covers everything like the one right here is from the core box it's literally the two locked doors if i'm correct and oh yeah it's called locked doors and this is actually giving an excuse to buy even more copies of the core game at the very least makes use of that second copy of scenario decks that you have no reason to have until you get these i'm not buying a third copy of the core all right so we've got Two packs here. One is one is entirely scenario, as here's the basic card for the set itself, and well, a treachery card on the back, and what looks like a treachery card on the front of this, but player cards on the back. And looks at it right there. But why am I saying this? Let's just get to this. I am actually play-wise, for once, up to date with all the mainline scenarios, all the way through the Circle Undone at this point. I am not paying any attention to the uh, articles for the upcoming expansion, except for the ones that are just like, here are the new investigators. But, here we are. So, again. Oh, no, this is the mainline... Okay, so I forgot, this. they don't have a card like this for the entire expansion, that's what the rule sheet's for. So we've got Curtain Call, which has three brand new acts, they're all act two. So for anybody who's played the scenario, you know what that means, potentially. And then we've got two more locations. It looks like a backstage doorway and a lobby doorway. So if I'm correct, those were the two that you randomized from a setup, so it's more potential ones. Then we've got Return to the Last King. And one new agenda with so i don't really know how to state this one there's three cards here i'm only showing off two because they're non-unique and then there's a unique one these have text on the back which was something that was used heavily in the original version of the scenario then we've got return to echoes of the past uh, 
with four new locations. Return to Unspeakable Oath. Woo! With a version 3 and a version 4 of Act 2. I don't know if there was only two versions. Then Phantom of Truths. Is it Truths or Truth? Truth. Singular. And that's just, here's a bunch of new locations. Six to be precise. Return to the Pallid Mask. Not Pale Mask. Hit us next with more Catacomb cards, four to be precise. So these are all meant to spice the thing up, not change it entirely, or at least in most of the cases. Uh, return to Black Star Rise. Which just has two locations, and again, they look like the randomized ones, so extra versions of that. And then, Return to Dim Carcosa, which has actually... Nope, it looked like it continued in here, but it's just four locations, and the same thing holds true on the back of these as it does for the normal versions. Then we go into some various cards here and there. It looks like we are into encounter sets. Uh, including some unique cards. I'm going to go ahead and physically open this first because no reason to forcefully stop in the middle of a thing. So I'll just stop before I get to that. Just boop. All right, so we've got uh, what looks like a new unique enemy to Curtain Call. Then some allies that can go in the Treachery deck as well as another whole treachery card for the second scenario. Two new cultists, same card for both of them. For third scenario, for the fourth, we got just a few extra things, two treacheries and an enemy by the looks of it. Then fifth, two copies of the same treachery card. Only one for the sixth scenario, and it is an enemy. Stupidly easy to evade. That's about it. Then, two treachery cards for the seventh scenario. They're both hostage something. Hmm. Oh, they're both hidden cards as well. That was something that was introduced in this expansion. And then lastly, we've got a new enemy, I think, for the eighth scenario. And then we get into actual new treachery decks. Like, whole decks, not just ones. So for some reason they did they went here are all the agendas, acts, locations, main cards, and then went the unique treachery cards. So here's the agenda decks. Which I think these just add to by the looks of it. I could be wrong, but we got three for one of them. Again, I'm just showing the backs because I don't want to spoil anything. The fact that like even monsters versus treacheries, sometimes it's a little spoiler. Next one actually has six cards. Three, two of each copy. Followed by four, two and two. And this one has six with what, at first glance, but I'm guessing are, yeah, they're all slightly different. They're hidden cards. Are four copies of one. I think they're probably named. I'm not even taking a good look at them myself right now because, again, I don't want to spoil myself. And then the rest, the last seven, are their own thing. And that one almost looks like something from Circle Undone. If people would like me to go over this stuff in more detail, Please ask, and I am more than willing to do so. Um, more, uh, But I would prefer you ask for me to start doing that with earlier stuff first. But all the cards right there are the new scenarios themselves, or the scenario update components. And then we've got just the player cards, which look to be... Um, oh, there are also some... Huh. There's also some new basic weaknesses. I'll get to that afterwards. But it looks like... Four from each class. There is no neutral this time. And, ooh, not all of them are upgrades. Interesting. I think this one's a downgrade. But I'll get to that. So we've got the 32 Colt. One of the earlier firearms. I think this was actually originally from the core game. It doesn't really help that I got kind of the core game and then I went straight into buying the Mythos packs. And the expansion boxes for the first two expansions and the expansion box for the third one, which was all that was out at the time. All right, so down to that downgrade one. <laughs> Down. Eat lead. 
I can swear this card exists. So this is either an alternate level zero version or it's a downgrade, which I have no problem with either. Ooh, an upgrade to Logical Reasoning. This is usually a good horror deal from the last I remember. I've used it a lot. I end up playing Seeker often. And then we've got a new version of Archaic Glyphs. They look to be both the same version. I don't know how Archaic Glyphs Archaic glyphs work too well. I ended up playing the combat MOOC during my playthrough of this scenario, and we usually kept stuff like this to that scenario, at least on our first playthrough. So I can't give a comparison to Strange Solution. Then on to Rogues, we've got Stealth. I think that's an upgraded version. And Suggestion. I don't know if this actually existed before. Mm -hmm. Then with Mystic, we've got Alchemical transmutation, money, 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 make money out of thin air, basically. And the AoE, that doesn't kill you in the process, or hurt you in the process, Storm of Spirits. And then I love what these two rogue cards are. Lantern and Gravedigger Shovel. Both good clue cards last I remember. No, one's basically a lesser permanent version of Flashlight, but also could just be some auto damage. Oh, okay. So this it just makes so you can do two damage if you remove it from play instead of putting it in the discard. Which, if you're not playing William York, go for it. Scavenge, though, might make that argument. And Gravedigger Shovel has, the same, has a similar effect. I think it adds one more strength with its fight, but you can get two clues if you remove it from the game. So, not bad. And then we've got three new treacheries that are all called Unspeakable Oath, something in parentheses. Bloodthirst, Curiosity, and Cowardice. These are all basic, and they are only available in campaign mode. They're all the same picture except a different color background for each. Uh, I'm not going to actually read that one off, though. But, again, scenario cards, player cards usual mix that you get when getting a return to. This actually, from what I can tell, had a lot more cards per scenario than Dunwich did, considering there was a scenario that had one card and another one that had zero, not counting the main card for either. But that's everything. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to press that like button. If you think somebody else will enjoy this, feel free to share this video. Either way, you'll help this video get seen more. If you didn't like this video, go ahead and press that dislike button. I won't mind, but please leave a constructive comment as to why. Also, feel free to comment in general, such as, like I said earlier, if you want to see me go over all this stuff in detail, or if you want to see a playthrough, how to play, deck construction, ideas, like anything in, with this game, I'm willing to cover it. If you want an example of how I do that kind of stuff, look at my Dark Souls uh, board game overviews or my Kingdom Death board game overviews. If you'd like me to go into more depth than I do in those examples, please state so in the comments. And if you'd like to see more like this, be it more unboxing videos, my board game overviews, or my painting videos, that last one I'm still trying to get around to doing for Mansions of Madness, but I've got a lot of other models to work on. And anything else that I might do on this channel, feel free to subscribe. Regardless, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.